have then a Skizelev from SnapSwap as our fireside chatter. And hello, Dennis. Hi, Steve. How are you? So, fine. Thank you. And we are pleased that you accepted to play the game. And also, we would like to thank all our partners, which make it uh, uh, possible. As this is a fireside chat, it will be quite short and directly to the bone. So let's start without further ado. And the one thing is generally where we start with, could you just tell us what is SnapSwap? What is it? What is SnapSwap doing? How would you do uh, explain it, let's say, in one or two sentences for those who don't know what it is? So in a few sentences, we just launched our new exciting product that is called Everest. Everest, like the biggest mountain in the world. And what, what we do with this product is we help entrepreneurs and startups to climb to the top of their business achievements. How mm -hmm. do we do that? By taking care of simple things like payments, expense management, and other stuff that normally disturb you from focusing on your clients and uh, on uh, your products. So that's, that's what we do. Payments, expense management for small businesses and startups. Mm -hmm. And how did you come uh, by, by to set up SnapSwap or to, how did you get the idea initially to set up, uh, I mean, to become involved with SnapSwap or if it was called differently beforehand? Ah, actually, you know, as a founder, I created this company here in Luxembourg mm -hmm. five years ago, and we went through certain evolution in terms of what we are delivering and what are the markets that we are addressing. Because initially, we were quite a technical company. We were doing B2B stuff, digital onboarding solution for banks, insurance companies, investment industry, using technologies like biometrics, etc. And in the course of building and developing our product, we had a lot of interaction with companies like us. For example, we were selected for a tech start program in Paris, where we were together with 10 other startups from all over the world, from US, from Africa, uh, from France, from uh, other European countries. And we always heard the same story from the founders, how complicated it is to manage payments, to manage expenses, like, you know, for information, for interaction, you have uh, Slack, you have uh, WhatsApp, you have other tools. But for your financials, you have to go to this stuff, you know, like work with PDF files instead of uh, no, no normal deliverables, mm -hmm. etc. So that's that's how we came the, we, to the idea. It was actually something that we needed for ourselves mm -hmm. to build a platform that would allow you to take care of your payments, of your expenses, in the same way you take care of uh, the interaction uh, of your team through uh, Slack or through Gmail, something that fits into the universe, into the style, into the work of a modern company. Mm. So that's how we decided that there is a niche on the market and we are well suited to attack this niche. Okay. And uh, let's say so, did it take long to find or to develop the right, uh, the, the, uh, let's say so, a feasible service or product from the detection of the needs to the first, let's call it prototype or beta or how you call it, it doesn't matter, but the first workable product or service, even though it's maybe not uh, on the commercial side, but that it, or where we would say, okay, let's test it. Did it take long? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It did. And so, generally speaking, it always depends on the industry. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you want to run like a simple picture sharing application, like Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. that's something that you can set up in a couple of weeks. Okay. But we are working in a heavily regulated environment. Mm -hmm. Payments are always regulated, so we had to get the license, we had to get partnership, like our partnership with MasterCard mm -hmm. that we announced recently, in order to be able to deliver the products, the full scope, payment cards, accounts, etc. Mm -hmm. So it took us almost two years 
to go from the idea, from the uh, concept mm -hmm. of the product to something that uh, we would be able to show to our test users, to allow them to onboard, to get the cards and to start using mm -hmm. it for payments. So, almost two years. Yeah, well, and the other thing is in the beginning, um, how did you go abroad? I mean, okay, you detected the need and did you already have an entity with which you could move forward? I mean, like, uh, uh, a company or you had already a team which enabled you to work on satisfying the need you have identified or was it something really completely new which you had to create from scratch the team the company and so on our situation was a bit unusual for a startup because when we came to the idea and to actually possibility to implement this product we already had a team and we already had a core technology that we developed for other markets. This technology of uh, allowing customers to onboard for payment accounts online. So we had already developed biometric solution. We had already developed real-time database scan and other technical stuff mm -hmm. that uh, helped us to create the product as uh, it is now. So we had a basic team in place. Of course, we needed to enlarge it. And we had the basic technology mm -hmm. in place that was our own, our proprietary technology okay. that, that helped a lot. And I mean, you had the, the something already in place, but where you, how did you get, move forward? I mean, because the, you also need resources, either financial or other resources. Did you have other products or services which you could sell or were already selling, where you could piggyback on, uh, eventually bootstrap or... How can one imagine it? Yeah, in that case, uh, we were lucky enough because our uh, digital onboarding solution was quite well accepted uh, by the markets. And we had paying customers, mm -hmm. so we actually generated a certain cash flow that allowed us to invest in the new development. But also, uh, being in Luxembourg, uh, we looked at all possible sources of support for innovation and for technology. And I would say Luxembourg is quite a friendly place mm -hmm. for, for this. So we managed to secure grant funding from uh, the Ministry of Economy that also helped us, mm -hmm. uh, helped us a lot. And then when we entered into a partnership with uh, MasterCard, there was also a financial component that uh, helped us to develop the product. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And in, I mean, here in Luxembourg, you already touched upon it that especially for your vertical, I mean, the financial industry or fintech or what it's called, it's a fertile, fertile ground and it's also promoted like that. And was it really easier to set it up or, uh, than somewhere else? Do you think it was an added value to be here in Luxembourg, except to have uh, the customers? But uh, to the ecosystem, which is always touted and put forward, was it really assisting you? Did you feel that, okay, yes, we got something? Because I guess in the beginning, uh, you didn't have fancy offices. Where did you start? Oh, we started in uh, the small room in the startup incubator called Lux Future. Ah, okay, Lab. from the BGL PNT power and, and Yes, exactly. At that time in uh, 2016, when we started the company in Luxembourg, it was actually quite an interesting place, this small building. Mm -hmm on the corner of uh, Roosevelt and Boulevard Royale, where there were a number of startups working on all different things, uh, like small human-like robots or some technology to measure how good you are in driving, etc. So it was like a fertile ground for interaction and to quickly get connected mm -hmm. with the Luxembourgish ecosystem. Oh. That's, that's how we started. And then we moved to our now big, and I would say, Nice, nicer office in uh, House of Startups about mm -hmm. a year ago, uh, last summer. And at the Lux Future Lab, uh, which you mentioned, uh, did it also help assist you uh, in, to, uh, to get some notoriety also with potential cluster customers or partners? Indeed, indeed. Uh, at that time, the head of the incubator was uh, mm -hmm. Karin Shijen. And uh, she was very helpful for startups like us, not only creating the environment, but also making events 
when the investors from local community were coming, uh, corporates were coming, so we were able to interact and present our solution. And that's actually how we got our first mm-hmm. customers, through this kind of interaction. And also for us as a financial service, it was quite productive to have direct line of interaction with BGL, mm-hmm. quite a big and well-developed financial institution, which was quite open to provide mentoring and introduction and show us how to integrate particular things in the Luxembourgish payment. Oh, universe. that's great. That sounds interesting. And the other thing is, I mean, you you were there, you set it up, you were working on the, the new service or product, and you had already some team, but I guess you needed also to adapt the team a little bit to have other skills, other expertise. Was it a challenge to to find this expertise on the one hand and on the other hand was it easy to detect which expertise you were needing where you needed in order to move forward a little bit a twofold question yeah yeah uh, it's indeed a very good question what helped us a lot is that from the very beginning we set up a company with the idea of uh, remote mm-hmm. work we didn't thought about <laughs> COVID, of course. We were thinking about the efficiency and the possibility to hire the best talent people from all over the world. So from the very beginning, and it's the case even now, half of our team, especially the technology development engineers, work with us remotely. And still we have all the system in place that allow us to integrate people into one mm-hmm. community. Like, for example, every morning at nine o'clock, we have a video call where everyone is present and everyone has to have a video on. So everyone can say hello and, you know, get ready for work and start the day. It's just mm-hmm. 15 minutes conversation that, that, that helps to keep the spirit and to keep the company going. That's how we managed to uh, find people. Uh, who work for us from different locations. Uh, we have uh, engineers working for us in Amsterdam, uh, in uh, uh, mm-hmm. in Germany, in Düsseldorf. Uh, we also have a small development team in Russia, in the city called Kaluga, that is about uh, 200 kilometers mm-hmm. east of Moscow, with outstanding pool of talents from the <laughs> local university. So we are lucky enough to be able to uh, top uh, the talent pool, not only mm-hmm. locally, not only in Luxembourg or in neighboring countries, but mm-hmm. quite okay. globally. So, and the other thing is, um, I mean, that's for developing the service or the product. And the other thing is to get it to the market. Uh, wh- how did you go about it? Did you sell, on the one hand, the Luxembourgish flag? And on the other hand, also, uh, was it easy to get into it? Because I guess, if, because you were, well, as you said, you were, you were working in a very regulated environment. And I can imagine not each corporate potential customer uh, would immediately say, oh, okay, let's try a solution and so on. Even if we need it, let's try it with a smaller player between quotation marks. How did you address this one? Or what was it, uh, or maybe it wasn't an issue at all? It was an issue indeed, especially uh, with our initial product that was clearly B2B mm-hmm. play. And I would say it's B to Big B, because uh, we, we wanted to deliver our solution to big banks or other financial services with a large client base. Only then it makes sense and it's, uh, it's efficient. So uh, on that side of the market, in B2B, we invested a lot in sales. So I spent half of my time just talking mm-hmm. with clients and presenting the solution, pitching it and convincing them. Uh, we also... Uh, went through all possible programs uh, that allow us engaged uh, as a startup to engage with uh, big corporates. Like, for example, uh, we were selected for mm-hmm. Techstars in Paris, and their corporate partners were Total, Accoratel, uh, Francis mm-hmm. Dijot, uh, the gaming industry in France. Uh, so, this caliber of companies, uh, Renault Nissan, for example, with whom we started mm-hmm. to talk. Then we uh, applied for a fintech village program with uh, ING in Mm -hmm. Belgium, and we were selected, uh, one of five startups in that cohort, and to start discussion with ING and to see how they would like to use our solution. 
So that's that, that's how we were uh, we were moving. We were using our personal connections and also connections of our mm -hmm. directors. That was important for us. Our chairman of the board, uh, Paul Helminger, is former mayor of Luxembourg. So he opened a number <laughs> of doors for us that mm -hmm. otherwise would not Okay, that's us. interesting. And coming a little back to the Techstars program, how was it? I mean, it was the uh, in the early days, uh, so as to where you have been as a Luxembourg company to the Techstarts program, which is, uh, please correct me, which is uh, a US-based program, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how is it to be, as a Luxembourg company, to be there among all the other companies? I mean, I can imagine that must be a wealth of information exchange and so on. How was it? Can you tell a little bit about it? It was it it was quite quite an experience for us, I would say, and it allowed us to you know to go to the next mm -hmm. level in terms of our connections with investors and with prospective customers. Uh, TechStars is one of the biggest and the most prestigious global acceleration programs. It started in the U.S. in Boulder, Colorado, and then it spanned it all over U.S. and then gradually started to expand uh, in Europe. In Techstars portfolio, there are companies like Uber, for example. So uh, it's quite a selective mm -hmm. program. And uh, in 2017, Techstars decided to open the chapter okay. in Paris. And they, uh, they opened the door for international startups. So there were about 1,000 applications at that time. And 10 companies were selected. So we were lucky enough to be one of the 10 companies selected. And we were the only and the first one from exactly, yeah. Luxembourg who ever joined start, uh, start, uh, tech yeah. Yeah. And that was quite an experience. Like uh, during the first months of the program, every day, there was half a day that they called mm -hmm. mental madness. When we had like 30 to 50 meetings in one day, very short meetings with very experienced people from other industries, from startups, from finance, from all over the world. And so uh, we pitched our solution and we got the feedback, immediate feedback, and then we had to sort it out. So it was quite, you know, quite a challenging. Every morning I caught six o'clock train from Luxembourg to Paris in order to be in the mm -hmm. office by nine to start this. And, you know, that's, that, that's how it works. And it was, there were a lot of interesting things. Like, for example, at some point we had a professional actor teaching us how to behave <laughs> with an audience, how to pitch uh -huh. on the stage with a big audience. It, and interesting enough, it was quite helpful for me personally because uh, that allowed me to get the confidence and you know to go to any the biggest player, the biggest corporation, or the biggest gathering and just explain what we are doing, how we are doing, and mm -hmm. be confident with it. So. It, it was quite a good school okay. for us. Indeed. And besides that, the where do you still have the links with the other, um, let's say, call companies of the program at that time? Did they also evolve uh, like you? I mean, because you evolved quite well. And did they also all most of them evolve, or were most of them okay? There's a reality check, and maybe not. Mm. I, I would say uh, out of 10 companies who were in our court, uh, two of them are still struggling with uh, finding their way through the ecosystem, but mm -hmm. they are alive and uh, they are doing, they are pivoting with their products and other each are quite mm -hmm. successful companies. Yeah, of course. I mean, you're successful still there. As well. <laughs> uh, the other companies in, in, in yeah. It's like, you know, we are still there after five years of being a startup. So it means that we're in the lucky 2% of companies who survive over five years. Yeah, That's exactly. already something. And then after tech stuff, I mean, you had your uh, product and service develop. And what were the next steps? I mean, in order to get traction, in order to develop the product, in order to get it to know, to know the in the market, to get market acceptance. What were the next steps which it uh, took? So with Techstars, we were still working on our digital onboarding mm -hmm. to be solutions. And uh, these solutions uh, was so good. So we were selected by another 
acceleration program run already by a financial mm. institution, oh, okay. Mastercard, one of the biggest players on the payment network. And that's how we start the engagement with Mastercard. And that's how we realized that our existing technology could be used for building a product to address the needs of the larger audience, to go to the market of startups and uh, small businesses. So the next step for us was to find a way to, to be selected and to start working with uh, MasterCard and start mm -hmm. building partnership. Now we that. And that was also quite an interesting program because that allows us to travel all over the world and to present our solution to MasterCard customers through events that were organized by MasterCard. We were pitching in Dubai, we were pitching in uh, Miami, in Mexico City, in Lisbon, and we were always presented mm -hmm. as a part oh. of MasterCard. So that was already quite a good positioning that allowed us to start mm -hmm. a meaningful conversation. With, but uh, uh, um, during that time, I mean, uh, from the inception and over the various programs and uh, and so on. Um, did you also follow the steps for funding, for securing funding, or was it via the programs that eventually the funding needs weren't so high as uh, without the programs? Yes, indeed, uh, because uh, we've got uh, a lot of support mm -hmm. in kind, I would say, from uh, from programs, but still we were working. And you know, I, I, I would say it's a normal for startup to be always in the fundraising mode. So uh, we were always talking with investors. Uh, Techstar was a good introduction because uh, that immediately get to us exposure to the network of hundreds of investors in Europe and in the US. And then we managed to start meaningful conversation with about 50 of them with whom we still in touch and uh, we exchange the information because, you know, uh, no, it's no. not a one-shot decision. You have to nourish the relationship with the investor to build the confidence, to make sure that they understand uh, your business. Uh, so when you need them, you can come and uh, make a pitch and no. they can come on board comfortably. So for us, that's, that, 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 that was the way. And we managed to raise sufficient capital, but we never were uh, looking for like extraordinary big round because my feeling is that uh, there should be a point when the company mm -hmm. is ready and the product is ready. So we were in between bootstrapping, raising small funds from angels just to make sure that we have sufficient resources to run the team to mm -hmm. build the product. And, and now, I mean, with this, uh, with Everest, what uh, Everest itself? I mean, uh, the what you just launched with Mastercard. How how would you? Ex what is the big step forward with Everest? How would you describe it? So, for mm -hmm. companies like us, for startups, what does it mean? It's uh, it's a tool to make the life easier. What can I do? I can go to Everest and open an account quickly online whenever I need it on Saturday and Sunday. And then I can order credit cards for all my teams, for all my members, and even virtual cards mm -hmm. for particular subscriptions. So it's, it's a very flexible tool. I can manage them online. I can set up limits. I can see what my team is doing. What are the transactions? I can generate expense reports. I can even do a snapshot of uh, receipts and never mm -hmm. carry a piece that's of great. paper with me on this. So that's that that's that the platform that uh, that we provide and uh, that is used by our clients to facilitate mm -hmm. their life to spend less time on expenses, on payments. Mm -hmm. on, uh, and the other on thing payments. is, I mean, yeah. as we talk a little bit through, you moved from the B to B, the big Bs to now it's okay it's also b2b but it's more like a retail uh, uh, like a consumer mm -hmm. market yes. how how did that affect you or did uh, did you have to change a lot your vision your strategy eventually inside the company yes indeed it changed the mindset mm -hmm. especially on go to markets on the sales side because uh, when you are selling 
product to the big companies and every contract is big, mm. you can afford to spend a year in negotiation and still be quite uh, relevant. Here, we have a totally different story. We have to reach out to the mass market. There are 25 million small businesses and startups in Europe who are our potential clients. So we cannot afford mm -hmm. talking with each of them and spending time. We need to make sure that uh, we efficiently communicate our value proposition, what we are delivering and what we are good for. And that creates a different, totally different sales structure, different aspects, uh, different uh, emphasis on marketing, different tools like online tools, digital tools mm -hmm. to communicate with our potential clients. And also another thing that is important is that we uh, consider our clients uh, as a community. It's not like in a bank when you go and then <laughs> you never know who else is banking with this bank because uh, it's, it's, yeah, the it's bank a tradition. It's it's like, yeah. and everywhere. For us, we see that, you know, yeah, we, see that uh, we are all entrepreneurs, we are all business people, we struggle with the same issues, uh, we share with uh, the same problems. So that's why we put a lot of emphasis on the community making sure that uh, people who are engaged with Everest, they can talk with each other. And also they can benefit, benefit from community deals that are not mm -hmm. available for a single company. Like for example, 20% discount on the travel, on car booking, on hotel reservations. We managed to negotiate it with providers like Avis, like Hertz, like Hotels.com, because we represent a community. Mm, and okay. they, they and on the them. other thing, if we come a little bit back, you started more or less in the Lux Future Lab, and now where are you based now? Uh, if I mm -hmm. no, we are in the house of house of mm -hmm. startups on the other and side of the bridge. Is house. there? It's 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 a it's a nice place. It's a nice uh, startup hub that is run run by the Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce in Luxembourg. And they are they are a good partner for us. We are there for for a year already, mm -hmm. and it's it's, it's and a very based, good place to uh, be. But it's I guess it's a little bit more bigger or open or I, I don't know than the Lux Future Lab. It's not this familiar uh, familiar atmosphere in the host. It's more f a little bit more focused. In in in, in indeed, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's more. I would say it's more modern building. So you have a lot of open spaces uh, and uh, the, the mode of interaction mm -hmm. is different. There are just much more companies. There are about 300 companies here in different accelerators like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Loft, uh, House of Fintech exactly, yeah. or Luxembourg City Incubator that also occupies, uh, mm -hmm. with, with whom we share the floor here. So it's a it's, it's much bigger community. But still, it has this uh, spirit, it has events that allow you to meet people, to interact with them, to show them what you are doing, mm -hmm. to learn what they are doing. So it's okay. quite, 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 quite And nice on the other side, now you have made a step, you have Everest, you have, you are addressing, let's, let's say it's a B2C market. It's, it's not the B2C, but it's a bigger retail market. What are the next yeah, it's 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 so, it's written. Um, it. How do you see, or do you have already an idea where you would like to go further? If you could dream up, if you would say, okay, I have a crystal ball, and that's where we would like to be. And I don't say anything about timing, but where it's eventually going. Uh. I think with Everest, mm -hmm. we are at the beginning of a very exciting journey because currently we are focused on just one aspect of uh, mm -hmm. business, uh, managing your expenses. Uh, but we see another uh, areas that are uh, linked to this, where we can also deliver good value for our clients. And the next thing that we have in mind is to offer full current account functionality mm -hmm. that would allow you to forget your bank and to do all your operations with Everest in a much better way with uh, simple invoicing mm -hmm. and uh, tracking capabilities. And then we would add also uh, the service that would allow our clients to accept mm -hmm. payments from their clients with credit cards, with point of sales, okay. to make it all in one platform. So how we see it in the future is a place where I can resolve 
all my needs related to payments and where I can feel that I'm in a good community. It's like like a Slack or Gmail for everything related mm. to payments in business. So that's that that's what we have in mind. Something that would take care of all your needs. Mm. And uh, uh, the then a little bit on the other side. Would you see yourself more like a European company, or are you also looking at the, you know, the US market, the Asian market, or would you say, okay, let's stay in the European market because uh, eventually in the US or Asian market there are other players where we could eventually team up, but we most uh, would most stay in the European market. How would, do you have any idea about that one? Yes, we actually were thinking uh, strategically in terms of the geographical expansion as well, not only the product expansion. And uh, we took kind of staged approach. So uh, we launched our product in Luxembourg mm -hmm. and because it's our home market and uh, we know it well and uh, people know us. Uh, then we're expanding to Belgium and Netherlands to be in Benelux. And it's also quite comfortable for us. And uh, mm -hmm. honestly speaking, there are no direct competitors so far. Uh, and then our plan is to further expand in Europe, in Eurozone countries, big markets like France, Germany, and then smaller markets uh, like Portugal, Austria, Ireland. So to be present at the end of the day, at the end of next year, in uh, all European countries. Mm -hmm. And we see Europe as quite an interesting market, 500 million people, 20, uh, 25 million companies. <laughs> and then we will decide. You know, if I can tell you that I have the no. strategy now, I would be lying. Okay, great. Then we'll Thank see you. What, what, what and now happens. at the end, a few questions. I mean, it's, it's, they are not serious questions now. A little bit about yourself. Are you more a person in the morning? You are doing uh, the, you are walking your dog or you are the downward, uh, downward dog, like, more like the yoga person? Okay, you are the one who walk him. So <laughs> I have to walk it. I have to walk him walk him in the morning. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, lucky enough, my dog, his name is Nuage. It's a French bulldog. So uh, <laughs> he's quite tolerant to my schedule. So usually in the morning, <laughs> first I do my yoga and then I and do then the, the yoga for the dog. When you're, for example, in the morning with the coffee, tea or what else, when uh, or, or when you're commuting, are you more listening to your playlist or is it more to news uh, or talk radio, if any? Oh. Now, nowadays, I spend some of my time, allocate some ah. of my time to learning Luxembourgish. So whenever I have a chance, I try to listen mm -hmm. to the news and broadcasts in Luxembourgish. To okay, get the great. Glass thank you very much. Of, uh, of the language. I, I would like to thank you in the name of Startup Grind for having played the game. Thank you very much. And wish you a lot of luck and hope to eventually to talk to you in a few years' time when you have done the European market and with other products. Thank you very much. And thank you for the audience for having been. Steve, thank you so much. Steve, thank you so much for the opportunity. It was great talking with you. And also thank you for the audience who came to uh, attend and to listen to us. So I see a number of entrepreneurs there. And I have, uh, I have a special gift. So everyone who could go to Everest platform today and register, I will give you 12 months of free service. Just okay, for great. Of your thank you very much. That's uh, who, um, really welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Steve.